Welcome to the regular meeting of the Cape Coral Youth Council. Today's date is January 10th. This meeting will now come to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Before I call the roll, members Doherty, German, Gorbanowski, Eichel, and Logan requested to be excused, and I will mark them so. Benitez? Present. Radish? Present. Cranford? Figueroa? Present. Logan? Sorry. Gwen? Present. Orozco? Present. Rowe? Present. Russell? Present. Ziegler? Present. Eight present and five excused and one absent. Thank you. We will now be doing the approval of the agenda or changes to the agenda. Are there any changes to the agenda? Seeing none, do we have a motion to adop adopt the agenda for January 10th as presented? Motion made by Member Ziegler. Can I have a second? Second by Member Russell. Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Bradish? Aye. Figueroa? Aye. Gwen? Aye. Orozco? Aye. Rowe? Aye. Russell? Aye. Ziegler? Aye. Benitez? Aye. Eight ayes, motion carried. Thank you. Next up is approval of the minutes. The meeting minutes for the December 13th meeting were attached to your backup material and emailed to the council for review and consideration prior to the meeting. Can I have a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes for the December 13th meeting as presented? Motion made by Member Figueroa. Can I have a second? Second by Member Bradish. We will now take a voice poll vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Next on the agenda is recognitions and achievements. Blessings in a Backpack of Southwest Florida is an organization that provides school, school aged children with meals on the weekends. As the Cape Coral Youth Council, we have for the past several years joined the fight against hunger by making this charity our legacy organization. During the Cape Coral Youth Council Fall Gala last, last September, we were able to raise $841 in donations for the this wonderful organization, thanks not only to the hard work of our council and advisors, but to exceptional members of our community. Today, it brings me great honor to present our donation to Blessings in a Backpack. Therefore, I would like to welcome the Executive Director of Blessings in a Backpack of Southwest Florida, Cecilia St. Arnold. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Do you want to hit that? Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, there we go. No. All right. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to have um, members come up to the front and present you the check while taking a picture, and then we'll have the video. Okay, great. Right? <laughs> thank okay. you. Well, I'm so sorry. Look, can I just say thank oh, you yeah. to you all? I mean, you all are one of the reasons that I get up every morning to see people uh, young people giving back to your own community, and I just want you to know that this amount will feed eight more kids in Cape Coral next school year, for the whole school year, four meals every weekend. So thank you all, and thank everybody that was part of it. We are so appreciative. Thank you. All right, if the council could now please um, stand in front of the podium.
All right, with that said, we will now be playing the video um, by the organization Blessings in a Backpack. Executive Director of Blessings in a Backpack of Southwest Florida. Did you know that there are 25 million food insecure children in this country? Much less, there's 60,000 food insecure children right here in Southwest Florida. And what that means for all of us is that on Monday through Friday when they're at school, they're getting a nutritious breakfast and lunch. But who's feeding them over the weekend? We are the program that does that for them. Every Friday, we send home four meals for these children in Southwest Florida. Again, there's 60,000 that need our services, and presently, we are feeding 4,000 every week. Good morning. My name is Christina Wilson. I'm the school social worker here at Colonia Elementary School. I have been honored to be a school social worker here at Colonia Elementary School for the last three years. We have volunteers come in on Thursdays to pack for blessings in a backpack, which we are so grateful for, and we give every student here at Colonia Elementary School a blessings in a backpack to take home for the weekend. Here at Colonia Elementary School, we have a lot of transitioning students, homeless students, students living in cars, hotels, etc. It's been a blessing to have Blessings in a Backpack to give out to our students each and every week. Hi, my name is Marcia Burr. I'm the principal at Colonial Elementary School. This is my fourth year here, and when I came back out in 2015-16 school year, I was very excited to find out that Colonial was a recipient of the Blessings program. Um, so we have loved the experience of having this program here, and I can tell you the kids love it too. They do not let us hesitate to uh, be late delivering those bags, and if there is ever a chance that it's a holiday and they think we might forget, they're reminding us from the day they get in, uh, from the time they get in on the day of the of the delivery. So the kids love it, the parents love it, and we are all just very blessed to be part of this program. children nutritious quality food to get them through the weekend for brain development and body growth and so when they come to school on Monday they're ready to learn. Thank you very much. And once again, I'd like to thank Ms. Arnold for helping us so much throughout the whole process of um, planning the gala and everything that had to do with those donations. Um, in 
addition to all the work that we've done with um, the, the organization over the past three years. Is there any member discussion or discussion from the advisors? Ms. Russell? Um, thank you very much for having this program and helping us uh, help the community. It's a, it's a pleasure to be able to give back and do something that we can see a difference in every single day we go to school when we see bright students happy and ready to learn. So thank you. Is there any other further discussion? Advisors? All right, seeing none, we will be moving on. Thank you so much, Ms. Arnold. <laughs> Item seven, advisor presentations. Advisors added the topic titled Upcoming Council Report. Therefore, I will now turn the floor over to Advisor Mazurkwitz for any updates. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, recently, uh, at City Council meeting, we talked about the noise ordinance that was recently passed and how it's impacting South Cape. There was a large pushback at the last meeting from uh, the community, uh, that the business community in South Cape, uh, there will, uh, City Council member Nelson uh, asked for permission to work with the group, got a second, so there'll be some tweaking to that ordinance possibly coming forward in the, in the very near future, I would suspect, uh, uh, trying to protect the quality of life for the adjoining residences while allowing uh, the businesses to be successful in, in a South Cape Entertainment District. So that's gonna be coming up in the near future. Uh, the other issue that's probably gonna be coming up within the next month or two uh, is Tropicana Park, a neighborhood park uh, in Northwest Cape Coral on the Spreader Waterway. Uh, the city is working with uh, the Southwest Florida Canoe Kayak Club, South Florida Canoe Kayak Club, I'm sorry, and the Rowing Club. The Rowing Club presently operates out of Cape Harbor and the Canoe Kayak Club was operating out of Lake Kennedy, but they are not uh, there any longer because of the Geobond Park improvements going in in that area. The city has identified uh, Tropicana Park as a viable alternative uh, for non-motorized watercraft. Uh, it was on the, uh, the designation as a uh, place to launch non-motorized watercraft uh, was on the geobond materials. The city now is contemplating working on a lease with those two organizations so they could uh, expand their work and hopefully someday both the organizations would work collaboratively with the city and it would become a city program. We would have canoe, kayak, and rowing available within the city of Cape Coral. Uh, there is uh, a lot of misunderstanding, uh, concern by the surrounding neighbors the boating, the power boating community that uses the spread of waterway now. So there's gonna be a lot of discussion, but I think that's something that's, uh, it could provide a great uh, opportunity for expansion for those services for young people. People, actually people of all ages uh, here in Cape Coral. So that'll be coming up in the near future. Those are the two big issues I see on the coming agendas that would impact the youth of the community. Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Mazurkowitz. Is there any member discussion? All right, so I'd like to begin with the um, Tropicana Park item that will be being discussed. And I think that looking into um, possibly working with um, whoever's working on this topic to look towards the ex expansion of services towards the youth of maybe these kayaks and these um, programs might be something that we might be interested in discussing and maybe coming up with a plan for. Is there any opportunity that we could get someone to present during our next meeting um, when it comes to that item? I would say Carrie Runyon from the Parks Department, the Parks Director, uh, is uh, she's the one I believe who's leading the staff negotiations with the uh, two organizations. All right, so if we have her present during the next meeting and we discuss this topic, we might possibly be able to um, start brainstorming some ideas on what we can do. All right, is there any member discussion? All right, seeing none, we'll be moving on to our next item, which is citizens input. This consists of input of citizens on matter, matters concerning city government three minutes per individuals and 
Council will listen to all speakers and respond after all speakers have made their presentation. I will now read the Pledge of Civility. We will be re respectful of each other even when we disagree. We will direct all comments to the issues and we will avoid personal attacks. Citizens' input is now open. Members of the public, please come forward to the podium. Please state your name clearly for the record. All right, seeing none, citizens' input is now closed. All right, seeing as our next item is recommendations to the council, the quarterly report or presentation to city council. Um, our next report is due April of 2020. Would we like to discuss, potentially start looking at this topic or would we like would we like to push it to a further meeting so that it's not so far out? Because it is in four months. Member Russell? Um, and I think we spoke about this a little bit last meeting. I think it'd be beneficial to at least start brainstorming about what we're gonna be talking about now. We don't have to have all the fine-tuned details worked out, but just a rough outline amongst the members who are uh, planning on attending that meeting. All right, so for this meeting, do, you, um, do members agree with possibly, we can't really discuss what topics we will discuss because we don't know what's gonna happen during the next four meetings. And what we might be discussing today might not be happening in the next four months. Um, however, would we like to discuss who is interested in um, making this presentation? All right, so member Ziegler. Um, I'm wondering, so we're looking at April. Do we have like the dates for the April meetings for city council before we start talking about who could be there or? All right, so the, the 6th and the 20th are, are both um, available dates. Right now, what I would just like to do, since it is so far out, is just gauge um, interest. Even if you might not be able to attend, just gauge interest and have kind of a pool of people that are interested in presenting. And then when the date gets closer and you guys know um, your uh, commitments and what you have to do, then we can determine who's going to go. All right. Um, as for seniors, this will be the last opportunity for any of us to present at um, to give a presentation for city council. And I do believe that Ms. Gorbanovsky was, um, had expressed interest in presenting at the April um, presentation during our last presentation discussion. So are there any other seniors that are interested in presenting during the April presentation? All right, seeing none. And of course, when we get closer to the date, we will have time to speak to Ms. Gorbanovsky and see um, what the interest is, but that is a good way to start. And are there any juniors who are interested in presenting during April? Member Ziegler? Member Rowe? Uh, Figueroa, and who else was that? And Member Cranford. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were like this. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry because I, I looked over there and he kind of went. <laughs> All right. Is that everyone? All right, so from here on to, I say to maybe two months before the presentation, um, I advise members who are interested in presenting to start brainstorming some ideas about what you might want to speak about and kind of keep these ideas that we'll be talking about in these next months um, as kind of stuff that we might want to present. All right, is there any other discussion?
Madam Chair. One discussion item that I think is going to be very important is your work on the uh, bus stop benches and the reports that I saw. Some, who did the report? That was amazing. I want to hire you. <laughs> I was, I, when you're done with college, come back. You can have a job. That was a great report. And if you, if you saw the report, um, and uh, that would be something, if you kept track of that, would be very, very helpful for City Council as they look at this project and think about expanding it. And I think uh, by the time the pilot program is now over, uh, and they are in the process of collecting data. They being um, the Rotary Kiwanis Club, uh, there is a group of volunteers for the city that's out collecting data, and the school board's collecting data. When, by the time they collect all that data and then report on the data, we'll probably and get ready to make a decision what they're gonna do, you'll probably be in the right time frame to say, here's what we found. And I think that would be very important to, uh, to share that with city council, not the usage, the, the, the maintenance, the uniqueness of uh, the conditions in Cape Coral with regard to if there's a house there, if there's not a house there. I was, it was very cool. So uh, I think that would be very helpful for the city to, uh, to look further, as they look further to expanding the program or just going with the pilot program. So that would be one item I would include on my report to council in April. All right, so that's something that we should keep in mind for April. Um, just as a point of clarification, when this topic comes around to discussion, will it be viable for the council that is here today or for the next council since seniors leave in May? Well, you're the, the, the council that's here right now is the one collecting the data. And the discuss, you know, when you make your presentation in April, it's probably going to be right, the city council is going to be making a decision right away. So I, I can't say if it's going to be, that's going to be important for the existing council to make input on. Going forward, if the council decides not to go forward, then there is no issue going forward. If the okay. council decide, does, dis, dis, decides to go forward and expand the project, then there'll be work from the council members, the youth council, in making recommendations on placement, what would be the, you know, the next round of uh, bus benches to go out, bus stop benches to go out. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, Mr. Mitchinson? I have member Ziegler's report pulled up if you guys would like to see what she did. I know we have bus stop movement on our agenda, so I didn't know if we wanted to cover the uh, outline of the benches then, or if we. That's I would do it then. Yeah, when you had, I just wanted yeah. to bring up that that's the kind of item you want to be thinking about for your April meeting. All right. So, Mr. Mitchinson, if it's okay, we'll be bringing this in later on. Thank you. That's the next item either way. Um, so we'll now be moving on to business item 10B. The bus, the bus stop movement continued discussion. This is a continued discussion from last meeting and I will now hand the floor over to Mr. Mitchinson actually to present the report made by member Ziegler. I mean, I feel as if Member Ziegler would be best to um, present this item, so if you'd like to present the item. Uh, yes, of course. So over break, before all of the students went back to school and started using the benches again, um, before, or actually before break, I submitted nine benches to Ms. Griglin that I would check up on and monitor, and then before the students went back to school, I went to my nine benches uh, and checked on them all, made a, a map for myself of how to find them and uh, clean them up around the bench and the bench platforms themselves and then kept a tally of each bench that I went to. And as you can see on the, the uh, screens in front of you, each bench I included the address and a specific location they were at for uh, to find them, a landmark that they're at because some of them are close together or uh, might be confusing to find, and then a little description of how the bench was when I found it. Um, the majority of the benches, I would say, were completely clean. Uh, and then some patterns I noticed were the cleanest benches were ones that were on uh, people's personal property. So a couple of the benches are uh, in 
for lack of a better phrase, like in front yards or on the side of houses, in yards that are clearly maintained and mowed, those benches had absolutely no issues. Um, they were completely um, clean, everything around the bench was clean, and then benches that were on empty lots, I would say, had more weeds around them. Uh, and in the email that I sent, I said possibly if, uh, whether or not that's an option, weed whacking around the benches, just because some of the platforms were starting to get covered in weeds. Uh, and the benches that were on empty lots were also much dirtier. Uh, some locations had much more trash than others. And then two of the benches I had were also locations that previously had the illegal picnic tables um, before the pilot program had started. And those picnic tables were still there. And the two benches I had with illegal picnic tables had even more debris um, food, trash than the ones that were just by themselves. And I'm not sure if that's because people are still using the picnic tables uh, in addition to the pilot program benches, uh, or if that's just been there this whole time and nobody's picked it up yet. Um, I'd say the benches were actually better than I thought they would be. Going out, I had gloves, trash bags. I thought they were going to be quite dirty. Uh, but overall, I'd say the results were better than expected, which is good. Um, of the, of the nine benches, I'd say over half were completely clean and didn't need any touch-ups. Um, I'm excited to see if it stays that way. Obviously, I don't have a lot of data on the usage of the bus stops because I'm not out there every morning when they're being used. Um, but maintenance-wise, I'd say they were pretty good. I was excited to see that they'd been kept up with. Thank you for your report, Member Ziegler. Is there any discussion from advisors or council members? Member Russell. So I actually really like this idea of a report. I think it would be very beneficial to those of us who have reached out to our schools and perhaps within the community to, um, if members are okay with it, but if you've, it's not even shared. So um, to use this as a kind of template, um, granted that we may want to make some minor changes to be able to collect data more efficiently, but if we could try to integrate this into us going around and managing and picking up the benches, I think that'd be... Uh, something beneficial. Thank you, Member Russell. I do believe that, yes, having um, those kinds of reports and maybe those uh, community those community service organizations that we use to help um, clean up our benches and especially with our schools, maybe asking them as, as well as us to kind of create these type of reports where it's just simple notes on overall stuff that they um, notice might be something very beneficial to um, be able to collect data for for the pilot um, program. Is there any other member discussion? All right, seeing none, we'll be going to item 9A, community outreach activity and events. This is a continued discussion from our last meeting with the intent of increasing our outreach in our community and potentially attending future city events. With that said, I will now hand the floor over to advisors and council for discussion. All right, so I believe that during our last meeting, we had see, we had looked at different events that were coming up within our city that we kind of wanted to attend and kind of um, start increasing our outreach within the community. And I do believe that the Jubilee was something that we had discussed on January 24th. All right, is there any discussion on that? Madam Chair, there was also the opportunity offered uh, to use the parks and rec vehicle and at all their events. And you could take advantage of that if you wanted to go out and do outreach. I thought that was a great opportunity. There's gonna be young people there when every time there's a parks and rec event. So those are another thing that, and I think we, I wasn't sure we're supposed to get, he's gonna look for dates, wasn't he? I know he? Mark Wright was doing most of it. I don't know if, did he give you any information in regards to that? Okay, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, I, so when, when um, Mark comes back, I think he can give us the information because he was gonna research as to what those dates were and where they were gonna be. That's a great opportunity. You use it as a home base. You've already used it. So it's something that's familiar to you. It's a great opportunity to go out and spread the word. All right, so um, going on in the future, yeah, I think that getting into contact with Mr. Cagle and getting those dates might be the best or the first step 
um, for us to actually start looking at these events. In addition, oh, Member Ziegler? Uh, I was just going to say, say uh, I definitely agree. We have used the FOMOBILE uh, previously at the um, tree lighting this year. And so I know when we were passing out the flyers, not only did it help us, it's kind of a partnership with the city. And I think that only furthers our cause. Not only are we talking to youth about the youth council, but then also talking about Parks and Rec and the city of Cape Coral and their services. And it's kind of a, a nice uh, collaboration between the two groups that I'd love to see continue. Um, one event that came to mind while we were talking about partnering with the Funmobile is, I know it's already passed for this year, uh, but Cape Coral's Kids Fest. Uh, I've seen the Funmobile at every year. Uh, it's a huge event that takes place yearly. Uh, and I think if, if we start to get involved in events like that, and um, obviously I don't have all of the dates for Parks and Rec's events, but if we could go to some of them, I think that would be a, an amazing way for outreach and not only to work with Parks and Rec, but to get the Youth Council's name out there as well. Thank you, Member Ziegler. Is there any other member discussion? Is there any discussion from advisors? All right, seeing none, we will move on to our next item, which is the Youth Council Media Recognition Program. This is a continued discussion from our last meetings. Therefore, I will now hand the floor over to our Communications Director, Sean Mitchinson, for any updates. Okay. So before I um, begin on the recognition program, I also just wanted to announce real quick that our um, articles were published in the On The Move paper. Um, we got two quarter page articles. Um, the first one was the uh, video contest. And then the second was the fall gala and the blessings in the backpack. Um, Member Rose quote was mentioned in the um, article. I just wanted to put that out there, so congrats. Um, but yeah. And then with the um, recognition program, um, I finished the survey or the, the questionnaire, um, the recommendation form that the students or uh, teachers will be filling out. I already sent it to Ms. Castillo in PDF form so that she can file it with um, uh, the city records. And then I will also, after this meeting, send it out to um, Ms. Griglin, who can then send it out to the entire council so that you guys can then distribute that through your school's administrations, um, through uh, your peers. And then also, um, if you wanted to maybe target like one uh, like uh, group of like teachers, like for instance, like if you wanted to go to the English department and have all the English department send it out to all their students, so that way you can target like all, the entire school through one branch of teachers. Thank you, Mr. Mitchinson. We will be looking at the form. Was it included in our backup material? It was. Okay. So um, if members can please go over their backup material and see the, the actual Google form that we will be using. Um, I reviewed it before the meeting, and I do believe that it has everything that we need. So with that, I think we're covered. When it comes to um, distributing it, distributing it, amongst our school. I think that having one of our, picking a department that you know that every student in, our, in your class or in your school takes and kind of distributing it throughout there might be a good idea. Um, however, what date do we want to set for our first um, round of recognition awards? So when we actually publish who, that, who will be recognized? Um, since we are doing it bi-monthly, I would say maybe sometime before one of the meetings in February, so that at the end of February we can announce our first recipient. So how about we set, we set the date for every recognition like selection to the first meeting of every other month. So that would mean that we would have our first recognition on February 8th? which is our first meeting, I believe. Yes, okay. So that means that our first recognition round would be February 8th. And then after that, we would skip March, go on to the second um, Friday of April. Oh. Madam Chair, the next Youth Council meeting in February is February the 14th. Okay, okay. So then February 14th. 
would that work? Is there any member discussion on when we should have this election? Mr. Mazurkowitz? Madam Chair, I just, to clarify, what are you going, what are you going to do at this first meeting? You're actually going to review the applications and select one, and then you would be inviting the student to the following meeting? I believe, yes, yes, because we would, so the first thing would be that we would um, be able, we would pub publish whoever won on our social, me social media, and we can, can either decide to do that when we select it or when we have them come to that meeting, kind of send out an invitation and have them come to that meeting. Um, so that is something that's up for discussion. Do we want to publish on our social media who won before or during when they come to the meeting? Um, and yes, because I believe that if we have if we have the selection the first our first meeting of the month and then have them come during the second meeting of the month, that's something that's viable. Ms. Member Radish, I feel like it would be nice if they came to the meeting and we all took a picture with them just so they can be recognized equally. And then we could also upload the pictures from them being here at the council on our social media as well. Okay, Member Russell. I think if we chose them at the beginning of the month and then recognize them at the end of the month, we could also use it as like, hey, come support um, the student from the school. She's being recognized at this meeting and have it kind of be, um, you know, more a little bit more celebratory to try to bring other people in. And do Definitely. Yeah. I think something that we might be able to do is have that person that wins or that gets chosen for that month kind of tell them to bring their friends and maybe their family um, as kind of a recognition because once they do get that they can put it on their college applications as in they got as the, one of their awards the youth council media recognition program month whatever um, so that might be something that we might want to look at and I do believe that a lot of schools use their social media to um, kind of celebrate whenever one of their students gets selected for an award or something like that. So that might be something that um, might be possible too. And is there any other member discussion? Ms. Figlin? Okay, thank you, Chair Benitez. So I, I just wanna make sure I understand as well because I believe there was some other discussion. How are we getting the forms out to the schools? So each one of us will be responsible for contacting our administration. Your own kinds, your own schools? Yes. Okay, that's all I wanted to make sure because I thought I was involved last time and I didn't want to make sure I missed something. Okay, okay. Okay, yeah. so you guys are taking care of making sure you're getting it to the correct administration so yes. that they have the forms in the schools. Perfect. Yes, and then with that, there's two things that are very important for that. Um, we each ha we have to set a deadline for when you have had to send that form out. In addition to you, we really have to have Miss um, Griglin like uh, copied on that email so that she gets as she gets it as well. Member Cranford. Just to get this clear, this is who, who's voting on these students or like nominating them? Just staff. So yeah, it will be it will be. It'll be emailed for consideration to the to um, a specific department within your school, and then once that's emailed out, anybody within the school can nominate someone else or nominate themselves. So students as well. Yes. Okay. Ms. Griglin, can I, Chair Benitez, if I could also make a recommendation, um, I don't know if you guys are going to have a cover letter or included on here as to who the forms need to go to meaning if you want them to come to me to make sure we have an email address on here because right now it's going to be unclear, unless um, I'm missing something. Through the program that we're using Google Forms, it all submits it digitally to um, me and then I can send it to uh, all the, res all the um, responses to you guys. Okay, perfect. Thank you. All right. Is there any other discussion? Member Russell? And just clarifying, since you are using Google Forms, um, they can only vote once per their email, correct? Yes. All right, so just wanted to make sure that there wasn't any faulty stuff is there any other member discussion all right so what will be planned for this um i do believe it would be beneficial if we set a deadline to um when our school when we have to have already um emailed these forms to our schools would wednesday of next week work All right, so, Member Russell? 
I think Wednesday would be okay. Um, it's just it's the beginning of the semester and the quarter, so a lot of the administrators are very busy at this time. So just to have us consider that when we're trying to go out and um, you know get this to the proper people. Yeah, I, Madam Chair. Mr. Mazurvitz. Since this is an ongoing program, I, I think you can establish a deadline for applications or nominations for the first one. And after that, if they'll come in, if they're not available or in time to make that, they'll just roll into the next two months group. Okay. So once, I think you could probably be pretty flexible with that nomination, with that nomination time period, probably having to do with how, how soon do you have to have them before you can gather them together and get them to everybody in, with the packet? Um, I'd probably say before the Tuesday so I can have it to Ms. Castillo so she can include it in the backup material, all the responses. So it would be the, the Tuesday before the meeting that we will be making this election? Yeah, because, I mean, you're, you can't predetermine who the winners are going to be because you can't even start talking about it until you hear at a meeting. So if the cutoff time is associated with the deadline for the packets, and that's the way it is in perpetuity, the Tuesday before the Friday meeting, then you have it. Yes. It's all settled for you. Yeah. Um, my, my worry before that was actually when council members would have those um, forms emailed to our schools by. So that's kind of because once we already email those once, they kind, those schools already have it. Um, however, we have to make sure that we have already emailed it. Member Cranford? Um, what exactly is the reason we're giving them to the administrators? Because that's our point of contact within schools. So it, when we, in order to reach all the students of Cape Coral, like of high schools in Cape Coral, and of course um, our Fort Myers schools, we would have to get through the administration so that they can kind of get it throughout the school. Am I answering your question? So we're asking the administration to send this to every student? Yes. My administration will never do that, and I'll let you know that now. I, I, I don't know if it's a problem with the administration, but they seem to take their, uh, not trying to be rude to them, but they, they take their jobs very seriously. And they are important, but like they're very lenient with doing, at least at my school, very lenient with doing things that involves uh, getting involved with other things and putting their name on stuff. I know personally, if I pass it around my school, it would not be a problem at all. I could email it straight to as many teachers as I want. I can ask my teachers to talk about it in class. But the second I get an administrator involved, it becomes a lot more serious than it really needs to be. So I know personally, I, I think it's going to be way too much trouble for what it's worth to actually get my administration and send that out to every student. Okay. Is there any other member discussion? Ms. Yugen? Um, I agree. I know with my school's administration, when we were trying to advertise the fall gala, I asked her if she could email um, the entire school about the fall gala, and she said um, that she wanted me to get confirmation from like the school board to get like approved that she can email it to everyone. So like I know she was really like serious about that. So, um, I, I, Madam Chair, I, I would agree. The school board has restrictions as to uh, their association with other organizations and, and using their uh, methods of, of distribution. So I would say that you guys are all leaders. You all pick a path in your school and get it out as best you can. What's going to happen is once a few people win and it gets in the paper, it's like... Um, What's the uh, doing the, do the right thing? Correct. It catches on fire by itself, and people are not, you know, people will recognize somebody doing something, a picture of someone doing nice on Facebook turns into a do the right thing uh, application by a third party who's not even involved. So, I mean, once you get this started, you get it out and about, and you have a few winners, I think you'll, uh, you'll see it, it spread pretty good, pretty well. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mazurkowitz. Member Russell. I think initially for um, those of you guys who do have administration that takes it a little bit more strictly, um, the best thing might be to just reach out to one department, such as the math department or language department, and talk to the, because there is a head for each one of those departments, 
and see if you can give it to that person or maybe just go to the teachers individually because teachers do have a free reign basically over what they post on their classrooms. So just for the time being, that might be a viable option. Thank you, Member Russell. Is there any other discussion? All right, so as of now, what the consensus seems to be is that um, within our own schools, and there is no one better than us to know what happens within our own schools, and every case is going to be different. So within our own schools, um, kind of figure out the best path that you can take um, to be able to get these applications out, in addition to using our maybe our personal social, social medias, because the people that are going to school with us are mainly the people that we have on our social media, and kind of using that to um, gauge interest. All right, is there any other discussion? Member Ziegler? Um, obviously, uh, I'd agree. We each know our individual schools best, and I can say I've already come up with a plan of action in my head while we're sitting here discussing it. I know my school has a, a program called Communal Time, uh, which is unique to us, but twice a week we meet as an entire high school, uh, and it's for open announcements about what's going on in the community, um, club meetings, competitions going on, and kind of a recognition period for students to stand up and announce things that are going on. Um, so for me, that's a really uh, convenient time to be able to stand up and make an announcement uh, about the program and it's a good way to get applications out there because after communal time we have time uh, to talk to anybody who's made an announcement during that day uh, but obviously that's different for each school uh, that'll be my plan of action and each uh, each school have a different route to get these applications to the students thank you member Ziegler is there any other member discussion member Figueroa I think maybe just try to set a date as to when the applications will be due that like people turn in instead of like when we send them out because like you said there we all have different ways of pa passing them out so maybe just set like a date that Sean would need the, all the applications by to send them to Miss Castillo would be the easiest route to go that way we all know if we don't pass them out that's on us because we're the leaders of all of our schools. I'm actually going to look at the calendar and see if our next meeting, if the me meeting that we'll be discussing this is going to be February the 14th, um, then we will have to have all applications in by February the 11th, and that is the Tuesday before our meeting. That's when all submissions will have to be sub um, in to Mr. Mitchinson to be able to discuss the selection at our next meeting. All right, is there any other discussion? Member Russell? I know how we had talked about um, after the fact that we won't really need to have a set due date and we'll just go through the list, but I do think um, for Member Mitchinson, if when that date gets closer, like maybe three days out, you post something on the feed saying three days till we pick our next person and just to get a little bit more um, last minute voting. Okay. I completely agree and having kind of or having the link of the uh, recognition um, form on our social media might be something that might be beneficial and kind of having a countdown maybe five days before we have the deadline for us to have it in. So it would be five days before that Tuesday. So this might be two things that we might want to do, uh, maybe putting a post over even doing this recognition program in the first place. Member Griglin. Chair Benitez, if we can just make a suggestion because um, Mrs. Castillo obviously has to get it on the agenda. If you can maybe make it for uh, Sean on the 10th and then Ms. Castillo oh, okay. on the 11th. Okay. Because that'll give her time because then she has to get it uploaded. All right. Do we need a motion for that? All right. I mean, if it's, unless anyone disagrees. And then it'll right. just rotate every two months. The same thing. Monday before it would be the, first, the, first the same meeting, thing. The deadlines will be due for the next time. All right. Yeah. And obviously, I kind of expect there to be things that we will need to improve because this is the first time we're doing it. So um, I think that just doing our best this first time and kind of um, gauging our limits and maybe what we did right for the next time that we do this to kind of make it easier for us and make sure that this continues. Is there any other member discussion? Member Ziegler? I have one question about the program in general. I keep hearing the term voting. Are we voting at our meeting or are they voting? So the way that it's going to happen, we're going to have nominations come in and then by, of course, by that Monday. And then that Friday when we come into the meeting, we will be looking at those. Is there actually something that might be beneficial is if we have the school and the name of the person blacked out for us? 
I can do that. And then we would look at maybe like why they were nominated in that as our reason too, because since we all are coming from different schools, that might change our voting, member would, admissions in. Would you also like me to um, black out the name so that we, just in case we have any affiliation with that person, we don't know ahead of time? Yes, so okay. it would be the name and the school. I believe that nothing else on the form is indicative of who it is. Okay. So, right, so yeah. you're going to have to identify, you're gonna to have to number each form. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the only people that can actually know who the, those people are going to be are gonna be our advisors. Once we vote, then we'll know who that person actually was. Yeah, honestly, I think that's better anyway because since most some of these kids might be under the age of 18, I mean, if they ever get into the packet or into the minutes, we don't want their names being shown anyway, right? I don't know how that works. Just a suggestion. I don't, I don't think we're not. We're not. We're not. We're showing a name. We're not showing their names. Okay. So. All right, Member Figueroa. I know that like maybe not like the first time we won't have that many applicants, but once like this program starts rolling, we only have until four thirty. If we get a like a lot of applicants, what is like the time constraint? Maybe like right. a preliminary elimination? Maybe. Well, here's what's, what what really has to happen is when if let's say you had fifty applications, you'd have to go through that information when it's shared with you before the meeting individually. Okay, so we'll get them beforehand. You'll, yeah, you're gonna All get them it. with your packets. Okay. All of you get them with your packets. You go through them, and then. Each of you will have an opportunity to nominate somebody, and what we'll do is what the, what City Council does presently is they uh, everybody has an opportunity to nominate someone, or there'll be no I nominate number one, I nominate number three, whatever. It won't be a name; it'll be a nomination from a number on the form, and then we'll see we'll see how it shakes out. By everybody nominating, then you could focus only on those applications here at the meeting. To practically pick like our top five in a way, or like top three or whatever. I, yeah, I would say, yeah, your top three. Okay. All right, so the way that the selection, just for clarification, the way the selection um, process is going to go, every member is going to nominate three of our top Well, gonna, I would say they nominate their top. Okay. And then they keep the other two, their other two, to go see how everybody else comes. Okay, and then once we have Could that. Could be really we'll... lucky and we all nominate the same one the first time, wouldn't that be really cool? But uh, that's not the way it's going to work, I assure you. All right. Member Cranford? So I know I've already asked this, but let me just confirm. So it's teachers and students can fill out applications? Yes. It, essentially, anyone can fill out those applications because once the application is out there, we can't really ban anyone from filling out an application. I, to me, this seems like the kind of thing we should only send out to teachers then. Because if you take into account that we already have like seven schools up here or somewhere around there and we're contacting an entire department in each school, that's already hitting like 50 applications just with teachers. Yeah, like even if it's teaching on students. Not to mention knowing the people I go to school with, it's not worth our time just putting it out there. <laughs> like I get that like students want a voice and everything, but if we're, we would sift through hundreds of applications if that were the case. Oh, uh, Madam Chair? I would recommend for the first period, let it go wild with a wide, <laughs> cast a wide net okay. for this first time. And if we find that we're getting inundated, we can go back and refine the process later on. I don't believe you're going to be inundated with the amount of nom nominations. I just, I'm trying to think of like, is there any way we can get some like because usually how these kind of things would go with like a recognition program or at least like in my experience is like everyone nominates someone and then there's some kind of sifting through before you get to the final vote and i get like that's what we'd be doing but i still feel like that's such a like maybe we could ask each department to nominate a person or each school to nominate each, one instead of each teacher i think that's something that we can discuss after our first round because we do before yeah, we even fair. get to that point Remember, we, do we don't have, have a, a big lot. time period for this first round it's going to be a new program. There's no cash award. I just, if, if I, I have can't to see sift through 200 be, applications. I, based on my experience with Do the Right Thing, I don't see you being inundated with a lot of nominations. Okay. I, I hope I'm wrong. I hope you are. Well, that's, well, that's my idea. Is like I kind of agree. Like I don't think we're going to get that many. But the thing is that if we get what we're aiming for, we will. Well, then at that point, we're going to need to... Yeah. Reduce. Redeal uh, how we are going to filter it down. 
Okay. Mr. Murchison? I feel as if we should keep it open to the students because first off, the students see their peers from a different perspective than the teachers. So we wanna keep it open to that view as well. And then also, I don't believe this first time, especially we're gonna to have too many responses. So I don't think it'll be an issue where we're gonna to have to sift through a lot. Thank you, Mr. Murchison. Um, Member Russell? So we are giving out the nominations and the thing that I kind of am worried about is will people be nominating themselves, teachers nominating students, or can students nominate other students? Because there might come up a situation where somebody is nominated and they didn't know that they were being nominated because they didn't fill it out themselves. And what would be the protocol if that happened? Madam Chair, that's exactly what happens to do the right thing. You mm -hmm. get nominated, uh, my daughter got caught doing something good uh, and her mother put it online and somebody saw it on Facebook and they nominated her for do the right thing from a Facebook posting. Okay. We were notified that she was selected and then we were extremely excited to get, bring her into the celebration. Okay. But leaving it wide open like that, I believe is going to give you a really good opportunity to catch young people doing good things. Uh, Member Ziegler? I have two questions for uh, the council. The first one being, I know a couple of us go to schools where students are both from Cape Coral and Fort Myers. Are we opening this up to both cities? Or are we keeping it to students only that live in Cape Coral? Well, we are keeping it to schools that are represented on this council. So as we can see, we have schools from Cape and then we do have our schools from um, Fort Myers and those students who attend those schools from Fort Myers um, would be, as they are represented on this council, would be represented through the recognition program. Okay, and then I have a second question um, for uh, Communications Director Mitchinson. I know you were able to put together the questions and um, I was wondering, since you're kind of um, our head liaison for this project, if you can put together a, an account of kind of the steps of this process. Um, I have the, the email that includes the questionnaire. Um, I already have that, but I think it might be helpful if we had a step-by-step -step process of uh, how this will work, at least for the first time, so we get a clear concept. Yeah, I could definitely put that together. Thank you, Member Ziegler. Member Figueroa. Um, as I was skimming the form, we can nominate both students and adults is what I saw in there. So it was, I believe there was um, discussion prior to this meeting that if, if you see an adult who is doing something exceptionally well for the youth, um, you can nominate them. So that, so essentially yes, adults. However, within the first round and everything, when we go through the selection progress, we might want to um, kind of look towards, it's kind of, a, it is up to our discretion and kind of looking at what is the most um, glaring, like, okay, candidate, yeah. yeah. That was my concern. Yeah, is there any other member discussion? Any discussion from our director or advisors? All right, seeing none, we will be moving on. Um, just as a point of, just as an inquiry, uh, did Mr. Cagle pass on to you the information about the social events? All right. <laughs> no, of course, I understand. So for that reason, we'll be skipping over item nine or 10D, the Youth Council Social Event, just because um, Mr. Cagle is the one that had the information for that. Um, and we will be moving on to the next meetings, or next meetings agenda. Um, we'll, we will not be discussing item 10E, environmental topic discussion. The council added this topic to our agenda in order to discuss possible environmental plans we as a council um, may begin discussing and planning. I will now hand the floor, the floor over to council members and advisors. Member Figueroa. Um, if I remember correctly, I think it was Ms. Iko that nominated this discussion or someone along those. I don't know if it was a senior, but I remember it was someone 
I do believe it was member Doherty because she had talked about the Keeping Lee County Beautiful, Keep Lee County Beautiful program. Um, however, I still wanted to open this topic up to the council just to get some initial discussion on it. And then when M member Doherty gets here, we can discuss it further. Member Bradish? <coughs> I know it's early right now, but if we could do something as a council for Earth Day, I think that's going to be a, like a great idea for it. We could post on social media, we can get it around. I think that's going to be a great idea. So as a point of clarification, do we have an, a calendar that we can tell when Earth Day is going to be? All right, one minute. April 22nd. All right, so it's going to it's going to be Wednesday, April 22nd. Um, and if we can plan, kind of um, initially plan an event or something that we might want to do then, that might be something that we might want to look into. That is, um, that is before the seniors leave the council too. So, all right, is there any member discussion? All right. Seeing none, um, this will be something that we'll have to keep in mind. And of course, with um, Ms. Stockerty's um, discussion, and she is working with Keep Lee, Keep Lee County Beautiful, so something that we might want to look toward, forwards to is maybe working with that youth council in the future as to maybe some potential plans that we can do with maybe environmental topics within Cape Coral. All right, any other discussion? Seeing none, we'll be moving on to our next item. And that is item 11, uh, next meeting agenda topics. Are there any topics that council members would like to consider for our next meeting? All right, so for our next meeting, um, we will continue discussing community outreach activity and events. The bus stop movement continued discussion. the Youth Council Media Recognition Program Selection, the Youth Council Social Event, a continued discussion of the environmental topic, and are there any other topics that Council would like to consider? Uh, how about advisors? All right, seeing none, can I have a motion to add top, those topics, those five topics to next meeting's agenda? Motion made by Member Cranford, can I have a second? Second by Member Bradish. We will now take a voice poll vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Moving on to item 12, reports. I will now open the floor for any reports from the Youth Council members or our communications director. Member Ziegler. As uh, communications director Mitchinson showed us earlier in our meeting, the two uh, Cape Coral newspaper articles were out, and I think that's a really good way to get our name out there. And I'm wondering uh, if there's an opportunity um, or any concepts or ideas, I think it'd be a good idea to write another article um, so that our name maybe continually starts to show up and people start to really recognize us because um, I'd say having something continual that they'll begin to notice is more effective than uh, one time uh, showing our names in the article. So if anybody has any other article ideas, I think it'd be a great way to continue spreading the word for a future Cape Coral article. Thank you. Is there any other member discussion? Mem Communications Director Sean Mitchinson. I believe last time when we were coming up with ideas, one of the um, topics that we suggested would be um, the road cleanup we could do, um, or we could do the bus stop benches as well. All right. Is there any member discussion? Member Cranford? Um, when do these come out? Like how frequently? They're actually quarterly, um, and I'm actually going to be on the distribution list. So when the next, when I know when the next date is, as soon as it's available, I will make sure it goes on an agenda so that we can talk about it. All right. So I did think it was quarterly, but that's it is probably. Because I'm thinking, if we do something for Earth Day, that's a great thing. It, it is. 
up on the um, But I timeline. think it would probably be right before it. So it just came out January, February, March, April. Yeah, we probably would miss it and have to do the, the last quarter of the year. Um, we could always do the student recommendation program. We would have done we it could. multiple times by the time it comes out. Yeah, and in addition, we can also do a preview to our... So by the time that, that we need to get that article in, our activity must have already been planned and set, so we can actually do a preview so that when the um, quarterly report comes out, the readers that are reading it are actually finding out about our event, and that might increase um, the amount of community members that show up to our event. Member Cranford? You could also just do a, an article just about the environment. So you do the, the road cleanup, you do the bus stop cleanup, and then you throw in how we're doing something for Earth Day. Thank you, Member Cranford. Is there any other discussion? All right, so these are things that we might be discussing in the future as that quarterly report comes up um, and as April gets nearer. Is there any other reports from councils or liaison or advisors? All right, seeing none. Time and place of future meetings. The next meeting of the Cape Coral Youth Council is scheduled for Friday, Jan January 24th at 3 p.m. in council chambers. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion made by Member Figueroa. Do I have a second? Second by Member Russell. Is there, oh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? This meeting is now adjourned. <coughs>